So, Josh, how are you getting on? How is Shrewsbury treating you? I obviously, you know, it, it's it, it's took me by surprise more than anything. You know, I didn't the move really came out of the blue, but um, no, I'm loving life and I've got what I wanted. I wanted to go full time and and sort of you know prove myself and and just just come over and, and give it maybe a shot really. But I'm I'm really enjoying it and I've I've I found a wee bit of form and got into the team. You know, but um, no, I'm loving life over here. Tell me, this is it any better than Oregon? Uh, <laughs> I've got more to do, like, but nah, to be fair, I wasn't, to be fair, I can't even really um, compare it because obviously I was living in Derry and traveling up to Lurgan, you know, three times a week. It's not as if I was actually getting the, the enjoy Lurgan, like. Um, yeah. It's one of them things where it was sort of, I was just passing by more than anything. I was just training and going straight home, but um, that's probably one thing that I've that I've would regret is probably not actually loving closer to Lurgan and, and being able to take it on more because it was more of like a dive to get away um, yeah. and get home early because we were training so late. But um, no, it's, it's it's a lovely place. Like it is, it's, it's a nice, it's a very nice place of the world over here. Like good, good. Um, what's it been like making the transition then to being a pro? Um, it's to be honest, the thing I was most concerned about when I came was fitness. Um, just just a fitness side. Obviously, with COVID as well, I w- we weren't training. Um, we Glen Avon regularly. We we ha- I think I was off for like five or six months. Um, by the time I got here, so it was it was more thinking about the the fitness side of things. It sort of scared me a wee bit, but. You know, like anything, you work hard for a couple of weeks and you, you start to find that you're you're getting fitness. I'm fittest now than I've ever been in my whole career. Um, even being of Derry City and stuff when I was full time before, I was never this fit. Like I was always been like average and ticking along, but I think I've surprised myself and I've surprised a lot of coaches over here as well with my fitness. And um obviously I've been playing a new role, um, you know, as well and in and, and a wing back, so I have to be fit. Yeah. But um, you know, it's just it's one of them things that was, you know, the transition. I knew what they expect slightly with, with Derry being full time before. So it was just it was it was the thought of the fitness thing sort of threw me. But now I've settled in and I'm I'm fittest now than I've ever been. So Good man. Is there anything that's been particularly hard about it? I suppose movement or trying a new position's been quite tough, has it? Yeah, well, it wasn't it's not actually just as like a wing back. Like obviously when I signed I was signed as a left winger. That's where I played my whole career, basically. Left wing and number 10, right wing. Um, when I came here, the first manager at the time, me, Ricketts, he, I was playing as a number eight. I was playing as a centre mid for, for quite a few months. I was on the other team, you know, as a centre mid. And, you know, he told me he wanted me in that role. And, and I was like, right, I bottomed it. So, like, it was one of the things he let me know early that he wanted to play more centrally to get on the ball. So, it was just, you know, an R thing they worked towards. Um. You know, trying to get into my head what I had to add in the game. You know what like, things I had to do and 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 cut out mistakes and stuff that I would have done as a winger, like ball carrying and and taking too many touches, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, now that he he's gone, so like the new manager came in, changed the system. Um, there's no we don't play with wingers very often, like so it's it's basically a three five two with with the wing backs being a massive part of it, and it's just one of them things where. I proved that I can do it. I have the, the energy to do it, and it's just trying to fit under it as a defensive, you know, side of things. That's that's what's probably catching me out most. But like I got on there, and now I think I played six games in a row this month. I started six games in a row um, at right wing back, so I'm getting used to it. I am getting used to it, but um, you know, it, that's probably been the most difficult thing, taking that on, you know, tactically and and even physically. It's been it's been quite demanding. Yeah, and like as you say, you've played six games in a row now. You've got a couple of goals as well, I think, um, for them. So things must be going yeah. all right on the pitch anyway. Yeah, well, that's like I've been doing things well. Like, you know, I'm doing, I feel like I'm sort of concentrating on doing a job at wing back because I know it's not my natural position. So I'm probably not playing as free as I would like. You know, I'm coming off thinking, oh, you know, I haven't bit as many people today. I haven't, you know, ran at people and created as much as I usually do when I'm playing left wing. But you know, I have to understand that I'm I'm not playing left wing. Like I'm playing wing back, and I have to be able to do both sides of the game, which is just like getting up and down. You know, defending and attacking. And I've, to be fair, like I have, I've scored two headers. But you know, it's probably you know it's surprised them. And 
I think it's just it's just trying to combine everything together at wing back, and that's it has been tough. Like, but um, no, I, I'm thriving off it. Like, I love being on every day, and and you know you can't beat it. Like, you're you're a professional footballer. You're just you know I, I'm at the stage in my life now where I have a have a family, and you know my young daughter, and obviously me. My missus, they're over here loving too, and they love Shrewsbury. And you know, I'm just doing it for them, really. And like, just seeing how far I can get. And you know, if I give everything I have, then I can never have any regrets about it. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. Like, good man, good man. Like, um, what's it been like playing during the pandemic? And obviously, over here, we've been playing with no fans now for quite some time. But that's been something you've been pretty much doing all season, really, isn't it? Yeah. So my day, de- my debut at home, I actually. We had a pilot scheme for that game. We were one of the teams that were lucky enough to have a pilot scheme for fans. And I think there was 1,500 fans allowed there. So when I made my debut, I actually came on in the, the sixth minute. Someone got injured and I came on and played centre mud. So like, it was it was nice. You know, it was like, you know yourself, like you're a football match, the fans make, make the games. You know, they mm-hmm. give they give me an extra 15%, I think. Like, it's just, it's one of them things, even when you're wrecked and, and you hear the fans cheering you on, you just want to give extra. So it has been weird. And for someone like me coming over to so it's like, you know, big fan bases and stuff, it probably has helped me at the start, at the, you know, in the sense where it's probably not as much pressure as it, it would have been if the, the crowds were packed and they were on your back and, you know, coming in as an unknown player. And, you know, a lot of people probably would have been getting on my back if I hadn't made a mistake. You don't know, like, yeah. you know, the away fans giving you jip or, you know, anything like that. Like, it's just, it's it's a bit weird, but it makes football. It does make it, like the fans make it. but um. No, it's been a strange time. It just feels like, you know, obviously that there's no atmospheres. You can hear everything. The ref hears everything, and you can't you can't get away with saying much to refs or anything like. So, um, you know, I'm sure it's the same for yourselves now. You know, when even not being able to go near the the grounds and just watching it online, it's it's quite it's surreal. Like, and especially at the minute because of COVID, we've been playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday for like a long, long period of time. So. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's been quite demanding as well. Oh, so that's what we've been doing as well. Obviously, with um, COVID, and whatnot as well, we've had a lot of catch up to do. So I know where you're coming from on that one. Um, yeah. What 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 about the next steps for you? I mean, are you thinking about international football? Are you thinking about are you, are you happy where you are for now? Do you want to you know do you want to keep on progressing in your career? Well, I think you know everybody wants i want to progress that's that's obviously you know what i'm about i don't i'm never usually happy in the one place you know ticking along i don't want to just be be here to make up numbers or you know i want to try and go as far as i can and if this is as far as i can go then so be it like i said before it's it's basically down to me i have all the platform and the tools now to go and and try and achieve as much as i can internet international thing I, i think i'm not even thinking about it to be honest um you know, obviously now with the World Cup qualifiers on today and, and yesterday and all week, it's starting to, it is exciting watching them. But like, for me, I don't feel like I'm anywhere near that yet. Um, I still have a lot they they learn and a lot they prove to a lot of people. So including myself, you know, like playing out a position and, and feeling like I can do more than one position, then, you know, if I, if I can do that for a season or two, it, it, it puts into my mind that, you know, I'm not just a left winger that can only like play as like a creative attacking player. I can also do like a role at wing back or a role in centre mid or a false nine. I've played false nine as well this year at some stage. So um, for me, I just think, you know, obviously I'm still ambitious. Like I'm, I'm 25 and I'm not getting any younger now. So I just want to um, see how far I can go and, you know, have no regrets about it. Good man. Um... What about when happened? Do you still keep an eye on how we're doing? Do you still keep in touch with the boys? Yeah, yeah. I was on the phone with Gary there about two weeks ago. I was right. checking with him. So, yeah, I watch like every game that he's on the on BBC and stuff. I would be watching on the bus on the way home. So, um, you know, obviously, single and all, they were all boys like that made me feel so welcome when I was there as well. And the team's changed quite a bit now, to be fair. Um, since I since I left as well, so. It's just uh, I I would be I'm obviously a massive Glen Avon fan too, so um you know it's a place I always have my heart and to be honest without Glen Avon this wouldn't have happened like you can you can butter it up and people would say I don't know you know about the ex clubs or whatever but genuinely like when I signed there they knew exactly what my ambitions were like Gary and, and Adrian Tier and the board they all knew exactly what I wanted to do and and my my aim at the end of the day was to go full time and they facilitated that and. 
to be honest, they they kept their word, and that's that's the one thing that for me in football it, that's really hard to come by is just having that loyalty and and honesty from from a manager and from a like a chairman and even the board. You know, it's just it's I felt a really good connection with them, and I felt a really good connection with the fans as well. It's probably the first place where I felt like you know I could kick on and, and prove you know how good it was and. It didn't really happen in the first year because I didn't score many goals, but it was it gave me the platform to guy to, to go and play and enjoy myself and and just um basically kickstart my career because you know it was a stage where I, I wanted to leave Derry City and I, I just really wanted to play football and guy was the, the main person that came to mind because he was always in contact with me um and as soon as he heard I was looking they they um go and play senior football. He just he, he he kept he kept on me and, and we got it done and I was I was delighted. It was the best move I've ever made. Good stuff. And you want to say to the boys back home if they're watching? Just to keep going. Like I know obviously it's been tough with, with COVID and, and you know, I've, I've been watching there's some results, but they've been playing some decent stuff as well. Um there was a couple that's what I was saying to Gary as well. Like I couldn't believe some of the, the draws they were getting when they were battering teams um and they were scoring let down against them. But I just feel like Gary's proved that he's, he's he can bring free players out of nothing. Basically, he's bringing free young boys. He's bringing boys that are unknown from from the sovereign leagues and stuff as well, Dublin and amateur leagues. And you can see that he, he has an eye for a player. Like so, no, I just I really hope that they win something in the next couple of years. Like I, I would have loved they won something. That's that's something that I'll probably have a massive regret over. Like because the the group that we had, I think it was the year we finished third. I just I couldn't believe we didn't win anything because we were so good that year. And um, you know, if you keep you keep us boys together that year, like it, it would it could have been a different story if you're adding it. But you know, Gary says himself and Adrian, it's hard to keep keep all the boys that are going to go and, and go full time, and that's just the the nature of the game. And and um, you know, it's just one of the things. But just for them, I hope I just hope I can see them win something. Um, I'll be jealous, like I will be jealous because <laughs> I wanted to win something as well. But just for the Lexus single and all, like he deserves it. Like he's he's been outstanding for so long as well, and I think they just deserve an All Irish Cup. Or would be nice to see them getting up and getting European football again as well. Yeah. Well, listen, Josh. Thanks for talking to us. Um, sure. Is there any chance of getting us over for a pre-season friendly? Because we all want out of the country now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I actually haven't been back. I haven't been back since I've signed. So right. I'm the same. It's, it's the same type with me. But to be fair, uh, it would be nice to get you over um, over here to be a bit more sunny as well. So uh, have a word with someone. See what you can do. <laughs> I, can see, I, can see. I can't even get my missus into the stadium yet. Never mind Glen Avon. So uh, <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Uh, okay, Cheers, man. Thank yeah. you, Michael. Cheers. Yeah, All of it. Listen, man. Cheers. Thank you.